Edward Jr. is named after my dad. He was uh, a cute little boy and he was very smart even at an early age. He was a very talented pianist and early on, like my dad, he could sit down and play by ear and he loved to play the piano. The first time we had a real crisis was that Thanksgiving, that first Thanksgiving of his freshman year in college. Um, he came home and uh, we had to call the family doctor in because he was very unstable. I think he knew instinctively uh, that if he did have to go and get psychiatric help or if he had to take medication that might interfere with what he would be able to do in the future. He was able to finish school but it was very uh, difficult and I think we just saw after he got out of school deterioration. Wouldn't get treatment, wouldn't really take medication on any regular level, unable to hold a job and really unable to sustain any relationships. It became, as, as, as somebody said, the problem with no solution. His behavior was not so much that he should be committed, he was not deemed to be a risk to himself or others, and yet he wasn't able to function in the way somebody his age with his ability should have been able to. My father died in 1993 and my mom then from leukemia died in 1995. So he was living uh, in the house my dad had put in trust for him uh, and he couldn't make it. After Edward committed suicide, Mary and I decided uh, that because I had the law enforcement view of it and she's had the uh, mental health view of it, that maybe it would make sense for us to tell our story. But I think with suicide, there is this huge stigma around uh, not wanting to talk about it, not wanting to make families feel bad, and as a result of which, it continues that stigma. There's always someone, there were two people or three people who come up and talk about a child or a colleague or a close relative who uh, not only suffers from mental illness, but who committed suicide. The reaction has been, this is a big problem. Uh, it has not been discussed, but the time has come now in 2014 to say, we need to reduce the stigma. We need to let people get help for it when they first see it. It's often not diagnosed until much later when it's difficult to treat. Let's diagnose and treat all of our children, our young adults, our returning veterans for the physical and the mental health trauma that they have suffered. We can do that in 2014. We could be the leader again in providing the way for the rest of the country and the world in diagnosing and treating mental and behavioral health.